Now shut up. The show's starting. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a fabulous Bat Test Entertainment. That's me, your hostess. And boy, do we have a fun show lined up today. No, I, I'm so excited. I've been trying to get this interview for almost a year now. And I finally had to invite the little booger over to my house for dinner and make him commit to a damn interview. And guess what? He did. I am so excited with my guest today. Okay, you know him as an actor, a television star, a movie star, a performer. He's a charity fundraiser, a lecturer. He's a director. He does everything. But most of all, he's the fabulous, the incredible. Please welcome to the show, my friend, Wesley Yor. Woo! Hey, Esther. I hope that wasn't too much. Um, I forgot to do the. Oh, I forgot to do the applause. I always do that. Okay. It makes me so upset when I. Sure, there. sure. Make, 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 make me lose my applause. I know. There it is. There it is. Everybody, everybody. Okay. There he is. The man. The dude. The one. Oh. I'm telling you. Oh, okay. And they're coming in. Here they go. People start popping in, and I can watch over here on the side. There's a bunch of numbers that come up, and um, I'm telling you. How are you? You just finished almost a week, almost two weeks here in Las Vegas. Yeah, we were, uh, Kathy, who played Holly on Land of the Lost, we right. were signing autographs at the Star Trek convention because our show was written by the Star Trek writers and we're the only show that the Star Trek convention allows other than Star Trek. So yeah. David Gerald, who wrote Trouble with Tribbles, was our head writer, and oh. Walter Koenig, the ori original Chekhov, created Enoch, the talking sleaze stack here. So, oh. yeah. Now, what, what, you have all kinds. Now, what is the, okay? There's the sleeve stack. There's props. I got props. I got I got dolls from my show. I created Dragon Tales on BBS. I'm, that, just, I'm a prop actor. I know. I, I, we're got, I, I mean, you know, thing people don't. A lot of people don't know, realize is that you're like the little game show queen. You like have done these fabulous shows that you've developed in Dragon. I believe Dragon Tales. Dragon was, Tales ran 10 years on PBS. That was on PBS. It was like one of the number one shows, right? It was. Around the world animated uh, for Sony Pictures and Children's Television Workshop. Wow. Wow. And these were like some of the crazy. Yeah, here's here's Zach and Wheezy I created, uh, the talking two-headed dragon. And, you know, listen, it, 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 it was such an honor to be a part of something for PBS. I must say that. So tell me something. What is it like to have, okay, you've been around. You've you've had an incredible <laughs> we've had we've had an incredible coming from you coming from you Esther that means a lot because you and I have known each other since forever I mean just for nineteen seventy nine wow nineteen seventy nine I, and I, I oh my god I, we had, we had like the same acting coach for a while. Yes. And you know, you told everybody that you had to bribe me by having dinner. You, you made dinner the other night at your fabulous, fabulous apartment, oh, 30 floors you. up overlooking Vegas. But I almost didn't come because you you forgot the salads. You left them in the refrigerator. It's okay. You left the iced tea. So I've been hooked on this new iced tea that you, you, you and your friend left here. And I'm like, it's really good. I'd never had that iced tea before. And I started drinking it like crazy. It's unbelievable. But, um, but no, I'm we we actually I still remember there was a, God rest his soul Michael Verona, okay. it was the acting coach loved him to death and oh some of those I mean there were people in our people would not believe this in our acting group of people there was like you Chris McDonald Sam yeah. Jones yeah. I so many people Tara Buckman and I still remember one of them. yeah Sam Jones Flash Gordon you know I, I do know. these autograph shows the other. <laughs> Okay, the other day, I hadn't seen Sam since for years. He used right. to come to my house. I used to have a little horse ranch, uh -huh. and Sam would come with Michael. And so fade in, fade out, Sam became this huge movie star with Flash Gordon and stuff right. like that. And I'm signing autographs in uh, in some town, <laughs> the Sacramento, the Sacramento. Right. And I put right next to Sam, and I go up to Sam and said, hey, Sam. He goes, Wesley, oh, my God, I, I haven't seen you in, like, decades and stuff. I said, you remember, you remember a girl named Kathy? We broke my guest bed with Kathy one night. He started, okay. Oh my god! Oh my god! I forgot about that. He was like, "Okay, I have. Well, I have. A, I remember. Okay, so Michael Verona was a character. He was a character. He was one of the craziest but great acting coaches. He was very physical. <laughs> he would slap you upside the head and tell you to do this scene. <laughs> I remember." Okay. Speaking of Sam Jones, this was right as Flash Gordon was coming out. And, you know, I, I had, 
because I was new in Hollywood in 79, 80 in that period, I uh, was, you know, still awed by certain people. But Michael had this, I don't know, he had the house there in, in, in like Studio City or something. But they, right. for some reason, somebody loaned him a house up in the Hollywood Hills at the top with a hot tub and all that kind of stuff. And... <laughs> I just remembered it was my first hot tub party that, well, acting class turned into a hot tub party and I didn't realize everybody was supposed to take their clothes off. And I, all of a sudden, Sam Jones, Sam Jones, butt ass naked. Trust me, it was the flash that went across the San Fernando Valley. I just couldn't stop looking at his, you know, you know what? I just kept going, watch. Well, and he, Sam did a playgirl. So if, I, if, if, if just Google it, you'll see it. Oh, yeah, just see it. But there's nothing better than to seeing it in real life. Talk about <laughs> land of the lost. Okay, let's well, I, I knew Michael because Michael was one of the best friends with Betty Corday. And uh -huh. Betty was the executive producer of Days of Our Lives, which I was I did for about a decade. Right. And like Mike Horton. And so that's how I actually met Michael because he was he was Betty's friend. Fabulous. And then, oh, hi, Barbara Rue. Barbara is a huge fan of yours, Richard Fuchs. Fuchs? Yeah, I always say fucks when I see that, but it's that, that <laughs> Richard Fuchs. Um, but for those of you that I know are going to be two together, there's a lot of people in the, in the side over here. I can see all the folks, but they're not talking because I guess they're in awe of the sleeve stack. <laughs> the fact that the sleeve stack's outfit matches my hair. <laughs> you know, listen, I got to tell you, I am a huge fan. I, I, you know, your, your, your red carpet, uh, all of your interviews and things you've done in your life, Esther. I mean, I truly, true. I think you are one of the most unique, fabulous creations ever. And I, it, it was truly an honor to be here, you know, oh, well, with or without the salad. It was truly an honor. You're never going to let me live that down. You know, the next time I see you, I'm going to show up with a damn salad spinner and go here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that happening now. But for those, I, I, you know, one of the things that I, I'm not sure, I, I haven't seen a lot of your interviews because I don't like to watch other people's interviews, but I, I, I wanted to let people know because I found this out at dinner when we were talking to each other and we were talking about our careers and where the hell we started. And I think to me, it is fascinating that this little boy born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and 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 uh, where was the other place? Asper, Mississippi. Asper, M I S S I P P I on him. Crooked letter, crooked letter, dotted letter. Ah, <laughs> but I wish you would tell. I mean, everybody said hello. Everybody there. People are starting to pop in and start talking hello from Southern California. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Chris Monaco and Wesley. Sometimes I don't know if you can see the chat thing. I can't on mine. Oh, you can't. You must be an an Apple. <laughs> um, <laughs> is it a Mac? It's a Mac. <laughs> Somebody goes, I'm just here to abuse you. Case in point, that's Frank Hagen. The carpet doesn't match the drapes. Shut up, Frank Hagen. But there's a children's show, sort of, kind of, maybe never was. Anyway, a bunch of people that you should be able to see. I thought you could be able to see the, um, the, the carpet. You're the, first, you're the first person that hasn't been able to. Everybody else sees that's them. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, well. It's okay. But anyway, I wanted everybody to know, because you told me this story, and I was just fascinated how this little old boy from Mississippi, raised in uh, Baton Rouge, raised in Mississippi, how the hell did you end up meeting Robert Goulet and starting your career off? I, 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 that was, okay. When, when I was five years old, I had, in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, my family, nobody's in entertainment. They were I I educators. I stood up and said, I'm going to be an actor. And they looked at me <laughs> like I had landed from Pluto. And so, you know, every, every opportunity I got as a kid in, in school and things and community theater. But my mom got a job in Las Vegas mm -hmm. in my senior year of high school. And we moved to Las Vegas because she was head of the drug abuse program for the state of Nevada. Right. And I was after school, I was selling artwork at the Desert Inn Hotel. <laughs> And it was this cheesy artwork. It was Diaz. I remember this one painter. His name was Diaz. He was the most popular painter. And it was these thick flowers would arrive, this oil, thick, like daisies and stuff. Right, and, right. And they, they were so new. He had just painted them like an assembly line. They were still dripping wet. So, and people, you know, they would win some money, come out and be drunk and buy a couple of paintings and go away. Right. But Robert Goulet's manager came into the gallery one day and said, you know, we need a driver for Bob, Bob, 
Robert Goulet and Carol Lawrence were doing a concert tour and I Do, I Do, the musical uh -huh. on the East Coast uh -huh. at the Gilbert Rose Circuit. And they said, we need a driver. I'm 17 years old. And they said, we want you to come with us. And I go, okay, I'll come. And so they flew me to New York. And I mean, I'm 17. I've never been to New York City. I, I, I mean, I've been to St. Louis, but I've never been to a city like New York. Right. I fly into New Jersey. The first thing I do is they give me a car. They said, you're driving Carol Lawrence, who at the time, West Side Story, Maria, big star. Right, right. They said, you're driving her to her dentist in New York City. <laughs> I go, the lady that did the cappuccino thing. <laughs> exactly. I'm going, I, got, I have to drive Carol Lawrence to the dentist in New York City? So I, I, I'm I, terrified. Remember, there's no Google Maps back right. then. I'm driving under the Lincoln Tunnel. I'm terrified. I get out, and there's New York, and there's all these trucks parked on the side. Right. And I get halfway through the very first intersection, and I see that the light is red. It's over on this side. I can't see the red light. Right. And I pull back, and there's a policeman. And he goes, roll down your window. And I'm like, oh, shh, I'm 17. I got Carol Lawrence. He goes, young man, uh, didn't you see the red light? I said, listen, listen, from where I'm from, the red lights are in the middle of the road. And, the, and, and here it's over on the right-hand side, and there's a truck there. As soon as I saw it, I backed up. And he saw the dashboard. It said the Garden State Art Festival. Right. He looked in the back. He goes, Oh, hello, Miss Lawrence. Young man, be more careful. And I knew at that moment the power of celebrity. <laughs> yes, it helps sometimes. It really does. So yeah. then, so you so you did this. That, how we did that? that? I, I, we we yeah. traveled for a year. I drove the mobile home. Robert would, would go. We'd do one week at a place, and then I'd pack up the kids. Uh, the, they had two boys, and we'd all get in the Dodge Travco motorhome that said the Bob Goulet Show. And I'm, I'm driving. With, you know, <laughs> he would get drunk. He would side swipe trucks. I mean, we broke down in 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 Delaware once. I mean, it, it was it was it was a journey. And then I just didn't go back to college. I I spent one year at UNLV, and I called home. My mother said, "My mother said, well, I figured you wouldn't come home." And I started auditioning and got very successful quickly. Uh, the now, uh, now, if if my memory serves me correct, little boy from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Is doing freaking Shakespeare. How the oh hell did that happen? How did that happen? Did you, did, what, did you go to Juilliards? Did you go to no, the American Academy? I was terrible. How did you go from Cornbread for, for, to for, Hamlet? How did you go from Cornbread to Hamlet? I want to know. Oh, God. Esther, there was a thing about auditioning for this Shakespeare. I didn't know it was American Shakespeare Festival at Stratford, which was run by this Juilliard School of Music. I had no idea what it was. It was huge. And so... I was I was I was working a temp job in New York for astrology. It's one of those computer right. astrology things where you send in thirty five dollars. They you know they uh -huh. sent you this thing. Right. They told your your fortune, but it said you had to know two pieces of Shakespeare. I'd never studied Shakespeare. I went to the right. library, the, the New York Library with the Lions, and I learned two sonnets. And I auditioned, and I got the part of Ariel in the Tempest with Morris Kornofsky. Santa Thompson was there. It was a big. It was it was all the Juilliard people. Right. And, um, the first day at the Manhattan Club, uh -huh. <laughs> oh gosh, I get on stage and I got my script and I'm playing, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, right. playing, uh, and I go, all hail grave master, grave so hail, I come to answer thy beck and call, be it to fly to swim, to dive into the fire. <laughs> and they go, Wesley, not on our stage. <laughs> no. I go, what's wrong? They go, your ex. I go, what ex is it? And, <laughs> And they said they had Liz Smith, this big bull of a lady, uh, was a linguist at Juilliard. And every day at Stratford, because we, we Liz, Liz Smith, not not the columnist. Well, because she was a big bull dyke. <laughs> you got me confused. Yeah, I know. Well, she was a British not lady. <laughs> anyway, she worked every day at Stratford. We were there for we rehearsed a month in New York and then nine uh -huh. months at Stratford, Connecticut. And uh -huh. every day, instead of going running and jumping, I had to go running, jumping. Ghosts, hosts, <laughs> and she got drunk. The best part, everybody, we we're terrified of this woman. Right. And, and the last night, she got a little drunk at the actors' pub up in the theater, uh -huh. and she came. She said, "Wesley, darling, the most enjoyable experience I've had this entire season at Stratford has been to make you lose that wonderful accent." <laughs> and <it> was, <laughs> now, so then after that, after New York, you went to California, the sunny. Well, I, I, I did West Side Story in Bucks County. And then, yeah, I went to, oh. I went to LA and, and then what, what, I also did, I had a nightclub act in Provincetown. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I was doing uh, the guys from the upstairs downstairs in New York. Rod Warren and Jay Jeffries wrote a comedy act for a girl and a guy. I auditioned again. I wasn't the singer or anything like that, but I auditioned. By the way, I asked him at Stratford, "Why did you hire me?" And yeah. the head of Juilliard said, "Wesley, you came into the audition. You blew the Shakespeare. You were terrible with right. the Shakespeare, but you made us laugh." And we said, "You know what? We need to spend the summer with that guy." Oh <laughs> That's my God. How I got it. But I, but the but the uh, the what the uh, Provincetown thing was, I answered a call. They were looking for a, a, a guy and a girl to sing comedy songs. Mm -hmm. I auditioned with Rubber Ducky from Sesame Street. Rubber Ducky, you're the one, <laughs> and I got, I got the job. My gosh! And so then, so okay, so then you ended up you're, you're in Los Angeles, in LA? and because uh, Days of Our Lives came first, right? It came first. Yeah, I. I I got my first TV series in a week and a half after I moved to LA. What was that? It was called The Organic Vegetables, produced by the monkeys, guys that produced the monkeys. I was the lead singer drummer of a band that uh -huh. worked for, for Kay Ballard in her restaurant, The Organic Vegetable Kay Restaurant. Ballard. God bless. And we started filming and there was a writer's strike. It didn't go on the air. And then I, I started recording for Motown, a white boy band. You were out a white boy band. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You know how successful we are. You never heard of us. <laughs> a white boy band back. White boy band from Motown, and then uh, and then I auditioned for Days of Our Lives, and I got it. So that, look at that! Look at that! Is that like a Jewish thing on top of your head there? What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> that was my wedding with Margot on Days of Our Lives. Uh, was she Jewish, or you just decided to do the? Uh, no, we were kind of. It was kind of a hippie thing. Uh, okay. Uh, we were we were the young couple on Days of Our Lives, and and. Oh. I was becoming a doctor and, you know, then of course, you know, I mean, when I first got on Days of Our Lives, uh, uh -huh. a wagon fell on me and crushed me. Then I found out that my father wasn't my father. He was really my uncle because my uncle had raped my mother years ago at the hospital. Then I had an affair with Trish and then the mafia was after me. Then I couldn't get it up. I thought I was gay. But then my father's ex-lover, Linda, proved that I wasn't gay. And then I met Margot and then she died of leukemia. And that was like the first week of the show. It was, it was, it was a soap opera. It was so much fun. Is it? Well, let me ask you something. What's it like? What's it like memorizing lines for a soap opera every single day? Does it like all of a sudden you go into auto autopilot and memorizing, or is yeah, it you do. You know, Esther, when I first started, it was I was terrified. I'd get these scripts, you know, and I'd be shaking because I mean, literally, you got the script for the next day that right. day when you finished. And but about two years into Days of Our Lives, I could I wouldn't even read the scripts till I got in in the morning. Really? And I would open the script and it was like, you'd cross your fingers. Do I have one page of dialogue? And some days, literally, I had 30 pages. And I had to memorize it within an hour. Oh, my gosh. I, and, and, I, and it's like a muscle. And I was able to do it. It was odd. And it, it was probably reckless of me. I should have put more effort into it. <laughs> but I was filming. But I got, you know, I got Land of the Lost playing Will Land at the of state, it, right after I got on day. So I, for two years... I'm filming two series because they're both NBC. So NBC let me do all my scenes on Days of Our Lives in the morning. And that meant that all the cast of Days of Our Lives hated me for three years because I would go in, film all my stuff and leave. And they were stuck for the rest of the day. And so and then I went over to the set of Land of the Lost. So in the morning, I'm crying that my girlfriend's leaving me. I'm having sexual problems and stuff like that. And in the afternoon, I'm running from dinosaurs going, run, Holly, run, there's a dinosaur. And that was, that was my life. Okay. All right, all right, everybody, here's what we're going to do right now. I am going to play the opening sequence of... And that's me singing it. Marshall, Will, and Holly On a routine expedition Met the greatest earthquake ever known High on the rapids It struck their tiny raft and plunge them down a thousand feet below to the land of the lost. Okay, a question. I'm reading the credits. Okay, <laughs> I'm looking at the credits and I see Wesley. There's no your Wesley, your, but it just says starring Wesley. What were you trying to be like, Cher? What the uh, hell? Just Jack. <laughs> no, it was. Wait, the, the Madonna? No, Madonna. No, it was the cross were so cheap they couldn't afford four letters. 
at the end. Why did you do why why was it why would he do okay. I want to know. Listen, and, and that was only for the first year of the three years. My manager at the time, I was recording for Motown. They thought, okay, Wesley, boy band, you know, this uh, was the decision. It was the stupidest decision in the whole world. <laughs> but that was me, Esther, that was me singing the theme song too to the show. Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. Oh, look at this. Uh, Sarah goes, I love this upbeat guy. I wish I could have his energy all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you just had, You just had a birthday. I turned 70 years old. Get the hell out of here. I was just going to, I wasn't even going to mention that. I was just going to say, you know, your annual 39th birthday. You know, I hate, you know, I would lie, I would normally lie, but I'll tell you, Facebook and Wikipedia and all that stuff has ruined an actor's ability to lie. Oh, it's true. True. Even though I have two personas and they still can't figure it out. And it only takes a, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how old. Well, which I one's know. older? Esther, which, which one of your personalities? Esther's older. Esther's older. She just has better skin because of the filter and the makeup. Michael, <laughs> on the other hand, hey, God bless her. You look fabulous, by the way. I, uh, and I love all the posters behind you. And the Paul Lynn laying down. That I, Paul Lynn, that is actually from the comedy store on the marquee on Sunset Boulevard. It was a whole Paul Lynn uh, uh, thing that fit into the marquee. So it, it said the Paul Lynn show. So I, I, I was, I've been wanting to mount it, but I haven't done it yet. Hey, 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 not, 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 this is a family show. Oh, that's right. Look at that, Sarah. 70, no way. That's right. He's got a picture of Dorian Gray and his, his patio stairs. I just know it. But so, so do you, when did all of a sudden the land of the lost just take off with this whole retro vintage thing? Uh -huh. I mean, how long ago? How, I, I mean, it's always been around and people have always yeah. watched it, but. I've been paying attention to it for the last five or six years. And it's like, it's like a second career. <laughs> You're traveling it's everywhere. It's, what's it like? What start? What do you think started? It's, it's gotten crazy. You know, when Land of the Lost was on, it was, it became NBC's number one TV show and not, not Saturday morning, but their number one show for a while, including really? primetime. <clears throat> and with all these conventions and stuff, uh, I don't know what's happened. I, I think that, <laughs> I don't know if, if all the other people from the, the actors from the 60s and 70s have passed away and we're left, but it's like, it, it's it, it's having this renaissance. So the, Will Ferrell did a movie called Land of the Lost, which I did a cameo with Will and the girl played Holly, Kathy Coleman and myself, got cut. But in the movie tanked, it lost 200, 200 million dollars. Like the uh, Beat Witch. Marty Croft have apologized. They said, okay, yeah, yeah, I know we blew it. But, uh, <laughs> It has been picking up and we do these conventions and little kids now come dressed as us from Land of the Lost and they can sing the, the theme song and, and they can they know the episode. It's crazy. It's it's odd how a show almost we're it's almost fifty years. Wow. Land of the Lost was nineteen seventy four, five uh -huh. and six. I mean that's forty eight years or so and it's and it continues to build an audience. It, it's it's been remarkable because who would have thought back then that, you know uh -huh. This would be the defining moment of my life. <laughs> but, 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 well, well, you know what? Also, you know, you, I, another defining moment, and I had not met you, and I had such a, a, a little girly crush on you. And uh, I remember going to the theaters before I came to Hollywood, before Rosemary Clooney dragged my ass to L.A., and I remember going to the theaters, and you were in this movie, and I with Valerie Bertinelli called Chomp. Brian, where's the new invention? I don't get it. Watch this. Brian, uh, what are you doing? There you are. Three years of hard work. A mechanical watchdog. Computerized, self-activating mobile crime deterrent. Unlike any watchdog that ever existed. Here he comes, and there he goes. Chomps, a world's greatest watchdog. What can a little dog like that do? Even if it's an electronic dog, he can detect a, a prowler or a burglar anywhere within his own property. 
a bite-sized, motorized, transistorized, computerized bundle of teeth. Hey, hold it. Come on. Valerie Bertinelli, star of the TV comedy One Day at a Time. Conrad Babe. Hi Guy Chuck McCann. Red Button. Oh, sorry, ladies. Hermione Baddeley. Oh, Wesley God. York. And Jim Backus. Starring in Chumps. Turn him on and he goes for your funny bone. A shaggy dog story from Hanna-Barbera and American International. Okay. That was, that was so cool. I mean, all right, I got to ask, what a, what a crazy cast. Red Buttons, Chuck McCann, Hermione Badley. Jim Backus. Oh, my gosh. Jim and the guy, the guy on the ladder, uh, that was Joey Bishop's son. Get out of here. Yeah. So that movie, got, I swear to God, that was the first time I ever saw you. And I said, I'm crazy. You know, it was fun is I got to give, first of all, I had a huge crush on Valerie. And we used we used to hang out together, like Mackenzie Phillips, Valerie. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, my God. Annie Lockhart, June Lockhart's daughter. And, uh, right. And Linda Blair. I mean, I, there was a whole group of us. But um, I got to give her her first screen kiss. And <laughs> it was, I mean, it was it was amazing. My, my funniest story was I had another movie coming out that I was starring in at the same time. And it was a horror movie. Right. Called The Toolbox Murders, where I kill everybody. And so it came out approximately at the same time. So I took some friends. I said, hey, let's go see my new movie. And it was already playing. It was Toolbox Murders. And it was already right. playing on Hollywood Boulevard, one of those cheesy, sleazy movies. Right, 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 well, right. The, it's a rainy day in Los Angeles. Everybody's got coats on. We go and the movie starts, Toolbox Murders, and it opens with the slashers and it's violent and all that stuff. And I look right. down the aisle and all my friends have taken their jacket and they're, they're cowering. They're not looking at the screen. And Lisa, this girl I was living with at the time, she turns to me and says, Wesley, I thought this was the Disney movie. <laughs> and she thought, they all thought they were seeing Chops, the Hanna Barbera movie, and this was like gore and violence. And well, you became look at this, look at this. You became such a little sex symbol. Look at you, look at you. Hold on, look at this. One. Look at you. Look at this. This is like out of sixteen spec. Remember that? <laughs> I love the. What were you? Do you? I go back in time. What were you thinking when the camera snapped? I want a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that first picture was from a Chippendales calendar I did. Oh, that, it was oh, called Soap Soaps. Studs. Soap Studs? Soaps, I was the month of May. Oh, my gosh. And then, of course, <laughs> the iconic. I mean, this is from Land of the Lost. Yeah, six, that was a photo from 16 Magazine that came on the set and wow. filmed it. And you yeah. said, look longingly at the sleep stack. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. I just, you know, I was so much fun going through you know, all, all the pictures and seeing these. Now, I did not know this other thing. Somebody somebody just wrote, I've actually seen Toolbox Murders. <laughs> well, it, you know what? It, it, it was the number one drive-in box office hit, Drive-In, back in 78. Mm -hmm. And Stephen King once did an article. He's the famous horror writer. And he said, uh -huh. they asked Stephen, if, if, you, if for Halloween, what are the 10 movies you would rent to watch? Uh -huh. And Toolbox Murders was one of them. Get out of here. Now, well, uh, there's another thing that I noticed too that you 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 were talking about performing and singing, and I I found this on the internet this morning, uh -huh. and I said I gotta put this up. There. No no no, I gotta put this up there. <laughs> but okay, you scare me sometimes, Esther. Well, <laughs> only because you opened for a convicted felon. But <laughs> I just thought I would put this up there. Oh my god. Were you yeah. his little pudding pop? I'm just trying to figure this whole thing out. Bill Cosby and Wesley, you're at Harris Lake Tahoe. <laughs> oh. You, you know what? That were you? You weren't expecting that, were you? Yeah, I was not expecting that. You know, I, I think I. Yeah, you know, it's it, oh god, everybody, it, 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 Leslie, it my heart. speechless. Leslie, you're is speechless for just five seconds. Go ahead. No, so opening night at Harris, I had, you know, as you saw, I had equal billing with Cosby. And right. I had never done a nightclub act in my life. Not right. one. Not a small club. Right. Nothing. And I'm opening. I have five girl dancers and singers, and we have uh -huh. 47 costume changes in the 
45 minutes we were doing. They were like, and there. They, huh? Like, like yeah, well, that Wesley, no, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> but, so what happened was I had never met Bill Cosby before. Mm -hmm. And I'm terrified. I've never done this. We're sold out, 3,000 people. Right. I, I'm getting paid a buttload of money. Right. And uh, so, and they call they call 15 minutes in the and, and my my girls go they flew in the girls flew in on the set with a 23 piece orchestra wow. and I'm all by myself in my rhinestone tuxedo it was, it was the eight <laughs> I know oh, rhinestone tuxedo and I go knock on Bill Cosby's door I've never uh -huh. met him and I'm terrified and I he opens the door he's got a cigar his jogging suit you know and a woman and I said oh, I go well, hello Mr Cosby I'm Wesley Ure he goes I know who you are come on in so I go in. <laughs> And he sits down on his chair. Now remember, I'm in my rhinestone tuxedo. I get on my knees, I, gra I grab his legs and I look up at him. I'm on the floor going, I'm so scared. <laughs> and there you are looking like a white pimp in rhinestone. I know. He starts to laugh. Uh -huh. and he said, look, the guys have seen your act. They know you're terrific. And he said, let me tell you something. When I did I Spy, he said I was a comic. I didn't do TV. Right. And Robert Culp took me aside and he showed me like a light would blow up on the set and I get terrified. Right. He would explain it to me. He said, I'm going to I'm going to walk you through this. I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And every night he watched my act and gave me notes. And so at the end, when I finished my, you know, I finished my applause, applause, applause. Right. And, they, and then, then, then they go. Ladies and gentlemen, Harris is proud to present Mr. Bill Cosby, 23 piece orchestra, pop it away. He drags his stool on stage with his, you know, jogging suit and the right. cigar. And he calls us back. He had never had an opening act come back. He goes, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Wesley's daughters and my girls would come out. And they take a bow. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Wesley, you Now the audience is applauding, right? They're screaming and doing what they're going to do. I'm on stage with Cosby. He drops his microphone. He looks at me and says, so uh, how'd it go tonight? Just as if we're alone in a room. I go, you know, Bill, I did what you said. I, I, that line you told me to, I, I did. The, I know, I was watching. Ladies and gentlemen, Wesley, you are. So, wow. All of this happened with Cosby, and we found out his history. Right. You know, he never had the greatest reputation to begin with. People would warn me about, about, about being difficult to work with. Right. But it broke my heart because he had taken such good care of me. But what? I mean, he turned out to be a jerk. I mean, he turned out to be a horrible, horrible man. Right. And and it's it's hard, you know. It's hard sometimes to erase. It, it, it was. I mean, it's such a disappointment and and it's such a betrayal for right. everything. And and so, you know. But, 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 but he was but, kind to me at that moment in, in time, and so I that I, I I have fond memories. But I've lost I've lost my good feelings, obviously. Uh, understandable, but at least the good part was you got some good advice at the time when it was. Relevant. You know, he was, he was terrific. So to me, but so, okay. Everybody, listen, you have more and you were like designed for C batteries and someone shoved these up your ass. You have the most incredible energy. You have such a smile that's contagious and people just love it. And I guess that's why you ended up becoming like Mr. Game Show. Uh, 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 person. Uh, what, what do you call it? Game show person. You, you were, uh, you were, you, you weren't a, you weren't a contestant. I guess you were a contestant. No, I was a celebrity. You were a, you were a celebrity contestant, correct? Yeah, yeah. Like I password. You, I, 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 password. I did a lot of pa a lot yeah. of passwords. You password did, I did it, and you know what? I so I was going through some of the old clips of password, and the one that I found today that I'm going to play is they beeped out a word. They beeped out a fucking word. And I, I've been looking, I go, well, it's got to be on the internet. So nowhere could I find it. And I'm going to play this clip. Everybody, this is Wesley. He's with Elizabeth Montgomery. And they are doing Password with the wonderful, great, uh, fabulous Alan Ludden. Now, I want you to see, I want you to see the name. I want you to see the uh, clue. Here we go. <laughs> it just makes me feel good. She just tries to make me feel good. All right, now, Paul, your option. <laughs> I'll play. Okay. <laughs> Balls. How would you have felt if you'd missed it? <laughs> I would have felt very bad. <laughs> I've got to tell you. 
Okay, with your lowest possible voice, Wesley. Uh, swingers, grass, and balls. Golf course. Is it a golf course? No, but it was logical. Good guess. All right. Toby has the option. Okay. I was... <laughs> I mean, just looking at the, I was, I, I wanted to keep playing the clip because it was so much fun. What did he? What was the clue? Testicles. He said testicles, and they bleeped that. Remember, this was the eighties. Oh, you couldn't right. say things back then. Oh my gosh. And that's why my voice got very low. Oh, look at this. Look who's on here right now. It just said two of my heroes, Scott Robbins, who is the, he has the biggest blog in all of Las Vegas with almost a hundred thousand people that tuned into his stuff and he is one of your biggest fans Scott. Oh, uh, uh wesley thanks, Scott. and he is he's watching he actually wrote two things he goes i'm having a moment he goes okay take up take up the take a deep breath scott it's fine you need to have you need to have him you need to have wesley on your on your on your vital vegas blog so i'm gonna set that up for you because it's big, 100,000 people, and it goes all over the world, and Scott's just fabulous, and he's only happy if he's got a big old Captain Morgan cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Captain Morgan is his face. Oop, I'm having a moment. Oh, I'm sorry. I did that again. So, so you, yeah, it was. It was the, it was the 70s, and you couldn't say test. No, that was the 80s. Was that the 80s? 80s, 80s. Well, yeah. you couldn't say 70s, 60s, yeah. Yeah, you couldn't say testicles, and I was driving, and I was trying, and the 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 the, um, the quality was so bad that I couldn't read his lips. I'm usually right. reading lips, but I couldn't read it. And I'm like, what did he say? And I've got well, there's one episode where because I got to play a lot with Elizabeth Montgomery and with Betty White and Susan oh. Richardson and uh, oh my god, uh, oh god, uh, uh, and everybody. But there's one with Deborah Lee Scott who. Uh, who was on Angie and and she she, she was like she had a, an outfit and her boob falls out and they have to blur Wait. it out and you can see it yeah you get Deborah Lee Scott password that, that's on the air isn't it it's that's on, on YouTube air. isn't it it, played. it was on the, it was actually on Buzzer TV the other day oh my gosh but I got to <laughs> play match game back in the day and all all, all the game shows oh my god yeah because if you go online and go Wesley your pass password you'll see it match game you'll see it and it, it it's just so much fun to watch that all right scott you wanted to ask a question ask us come on we're waiting of course there's a delay so with some of the <laughs> um, but i i just you know i i just think to myself wow some of the stuff that you've done especially you've done a lot of of charity as well and wow. you've used your celebrity to to help people what were some of the charities that you've done Boy, we've raised a lot of, i used to produce big fundraisers uh, especially in palm springs uh, mm -hmm. 85 performers Where you live now right i can yeah, say I that do. and in puerto vallarta half the year in mexico oh, oh what a difficult life you have oh my god i'm exhausted to <laughs> so, and oh um, yeah, well, we raised for, for aids a lot for uh, uh -huh. you know for aids assistance program for for mm -hmm. battered women for breast cancer Right. raised a lot of money to help a lot of people. But, you know, I'm so grateful. I, listen, I'm a little kid from Mississippi. I mean, I look around sometimes and go, how the hell did I get here? I mean, it's, especially when I turned 70 a couple of days ago, I, you know, you reflect upon your life on some of these big birthdays. Right. I looked around at where I live and what I have and, you know, and what I still get to do and play. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I, it's hard to put into words. I mean, how grateful I am about, about, what came my way, and uh, I, I, I have never taken it for granted, not once. I, no. I, I and, get the privilege. And, and I will tell everyone that you are one of the kindest, sweetest, nicest people. When I'm when I'm not dressed like this, and I'm Mike Michael who talks like this, but and I did the Paul Lynn show. You came to every single Paul Lynn show that was in in, in Palm Springs, and that, and that touched my heart so much, and it was just incredible. Hold on, here we go, Scott. I'm curious if there's any way to grasp the impact Land of the Lost had on people's lives. Wesley was like the brother I never had. Well, I have one, but he's boring. <laughs> what do you have it, to say on that one? Well, it's amazing. I, and Scott, you're right. We have people come up to our table when we're signing autographs and sometimes in tears, uh, one guy came up to us and said, listen, I got to tell you in between the third season, going to the third season, we, in the show, our dad left because of money and we had our uncle come in. And he said, my family was getting a divorce. I was losing my father. And he said, I, I couldn't handle it. I said, he said, I was crying all the time. He's a little kid. 
He said, I didn't think I could get through it, but I saw that you lost your dad and your uncle came in and you survived. And it gave me the strength to know that I could get through this. Uh huh. That is incredible. You know, we had we had one young girl from Compton. She called and she she, she came over and she's crying and she says, um, we couldn't play in Compton. It was too dangerous in this in in the in the weekends, you know, after school. And we had to play Land of the Lost in the house under you know tables and things. Right. And the the best, well, not the best, just a, a one that touched our Kathy Holly in my my heart. Uh huh. Two blind people came up to us and they were, were married and they had become blind after Land of the Lost, both of them. They met at a blind school. Right. And they said, um, one of the things we have in common is because we had sight back when we saw Land of the Lost. Right. And we could talk about it. And they said, said, Kathy, can we touch your face? And they both felt Kathy's face, Kathy Coleman, Holly. Oh my and gosh. Her hair still long and blonde. And, and they felt her face and they started to cry and said, we remember you. And we have moments like this. That, I mean, <sighs> I, it was so funny. You barely touched. Scott is a hard ass. He's a real hard ass. But for him to have a tear, he just, he just said, it. he goes, I'm tearing up. No joke. And then he just wrote, it was Batman and Land of the Lost, life altering. And, you know, and people are saying that out of sincerity, Wesley. Yeah. They don't say it, you know, oh, you know, to kiss your ass or whatever. But, you know, you, you, you realize 50 years later, how many lives you touch those. Oh, I'm just, well, this, you know what? The, the effects look hokey now, but if you go watch some of the shows, you can watch them for free on YouTube, a couple of them. Right. They were written by the top sci fi writers of our generation. And right. this, the stories hold up time doorways and matrices and alternate universes and aliens mm-hmm. and stuff. It never talked down to kids. It was written like a, a primetime show, but they made it for kids. Right. And a lot of people, we have a lot of people come to our table and talk to us and send messages. They became scientists. Two of the heads of JPL, uh, they were born, they were raised in Iraq. And they came to to our table once and said, hey, we thought you spoke Farsi because we were dubbed into Farsi. (laughs) And they invited Kathy and I to go to to JPL, Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, on Uh a private tour. And they let us play with a joystick that drove the Mars rover. Get out of here for real. In this room, it was this room, empty room with tons of computers. One person in that room, this huge room, bank of computers, and he was programming the Mars, uh, what the rover was going to do the next day. And he said, Hey, you want to play? He was a fan. He said, You want to play with the joystick? We go, Yeah. Now, we, it did not move the Mars rover because what they did right. was they planned it and, you know, tested it on the computers and then. When they finished what they wanted to do for the next day, they sent it to Mars, which takes about six to eight hours. Right. And so we didn't actually get to move it. Right. But we got to play with it. And he had a driver's license. He had the only Mars driver's license because this guy had driven every rover, every landing of Mars up until that point. Wow. And and Scott asked another question that I was going to ask, but he he being a writer, he he puts it the right way. Is it weird to be idolized for a show that aired so long ago? Is is, is that surreal to you? Good question, Scott. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it is, it, you know, I, I didn't see myself back then, you know, I, 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 you know, we all have our own self image problems and things like that, you know, growing up. And, um, I, I didn't, I was doing all this stuff and magazines and stuff, and I just never saw myself as that. And, and now years later to, to sit at these tables and, and, you know, to have this kind of accolade, which is, it's odd. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's who would have thought 50 years later that people still would want to talk to me and, and, and ask me about the work that I did so long ago. Invite but, you over to the house for dinner. Forget. Yeah, yeah, hello. It got me a free meal at your place. 30 stories up. Thank you very much. Looking at the best view. Of my but no, seriously, it's, it, it must be just, it's like you said, you go home, you go home at night and you just go, so pro- you must go. Wow. Wow. I remember, listen, the opening, I, I Oh, the opening night. Of, oh, go ahead. Opening night in Vegas. Uh, I had never, you know, I said I'd never done a nightclub back before. Mm-hmm. I can't get off stage. I just the audience is going crazy. I'm with Cosby. I'm all by myself because the girls are still getting out of their stuff. And mm-hmm. I go in my dressing room, and as I'm walking down the back hallway, the head of Harris uh, uh, is there. He's going like, "You went five minutes over." <laughs> because in Vegas. That meant money, gambling money, and he was pissed. Right. 
And I go in my shower. I go, I jumped into the shower and I sat in the shower sobbing. I was sobbing, sitting the, on the, the bottom of, in the star dressing. Well, not so it's star, but Ed Cosby. Right. But I was sitting in the dressing, you know, thinking, how did I get here? What, I mean, this is, what did I just do? I mean, what I put, when you put yourself out there, you know, without any experience, but that those emotions, I mean, you know, those, yeah. I mean, I know. It's hard I'm thinking for hot water going down. I'm sitting naked, you know, on the floor of the shower crying and thinking and shaking like what just happened? Yeah. No, shows are fine for running too long. They, they, they are. They get really pissy. I was at Bally's and I had this little French guy. I used to call him Topo Gigio. He's a little mentalist. And we were doing the Paul in show and he would stand there in the back doing this. I'm like, oh, motherfucker, get over it. I'm, I'm finishing my show here. I went two minutes over. And but he was the next act because they had four shows. They had Wayne Newton, this Bally, the, the, this little mentalist, me, the Bronx Wanderers. But little and and, and I, as Paul ended up, I would go Topo Gigio's in the back, busting a. Got to tell you that show, the Paul Lynn <laughs> show. Oh my God, I I, I I took friends to kept taking friends to see it. It was extraordinary. Oh, yes. I mean, it literally, it, it, it was just it was extraordinary. And because I know Peter Marshall and. And right. some of the folks that they're all that friends. We we about. Have, people don't realize we have the same group of friends. Literally, we yeah, have the we same do. group of friends. Oh, here he goes. Hold on. What is this? Um, has there ever been discussions about a reunion show? What did you think of the movie? <clears throat> the, well, <laughs> the movie was in the movie was in Abbott and Costello. It was Land of the Lost was about a family, a, a dark, a, a dark drama. And and it was Will Ferrell that turned it into Abbott and Costello, basically. Oh, and the problem of Bewitched guy, too, you remember. The head of Universal quit over it. They lost, listen to this, two hundred million dollars. Hundred million in production they lost, and a hundred million in advertising. It was crazy. And I and I, I just did a show with Marty Croft uh, the other day for Susan Anton. You, you were on his show. Well, Susan Susan Anton has a new show, and oh. we were guests on her first show. And Marty says, Yeah, we want to do a new land of the lost. And David Gerald, who's our head writer, who wrote Trouble with Tribbles for Star Trek, uh -huh. I, he just announced he's a new novel is coming out for Land of the Lost. And it's a tr it's based on the original show because he wrote the original show. Right. And it, the, the, the premise real quickly is just that we had a little baby brother that wasn't on the, the raft with us when we went over the waterfall. Right. And he's now 40 years later with two daughters and he comes to find us. Wow. Maybe you could. How do I say this? Maybe you could be the grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better than that. Esther, he, said, he said that I'm actually gone crazy. I live in a cave and I'm nuts. Okay, that's like your place in Puerto Rico. I can. Like <laughs> <laughs> it oh resonates. God. Oh my God, that is so. So, so it's something that's being discussed. It is, you know, and it came out in the, the there was a version in the, that lasted only a year. Timothy Bottoms mm -hmm. in the '90s, and oh my they, God. they keep wanting to bringing it back. It, it was it was the Croft's number one show. They it, it's the only show that ever ran three years. Well, the, well, so Sid and Marty on the rights, right? Yeah, and I just and Kathy and I when we were in Vegas, we did a live show with Sid Croft, right? A podcast with Sid's podcast the other right. day, you know, and he, you know. Right. There's, there's so much interest in it. It's it's um, first of all, it was a good sci-fi. It was it was a real story, and it, it holds up because it was about a family, a family that lost their mother. They were mm -hmm. bonded together in this extreme environment, you know. And then with all the sci-fi elements, you know. Right. My favorite thing though is Walter Koenig. If if you're a Star Trek fans, you know him as Chekhov in the original Star Trek. He created. I said Enoch again. So oh. which came on in this. I think the second or third episode. So he, <laughs> we're at Star Trek convention. <laughs> and he'll come by our table. He's got his hat on and he's shuffling around. Uh -huh. He goes, those damn Sid Marty Cross. I should have gotten residuals, Phoenix. I should have gotten residuals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know those residuals come trickling in. One uh, penny. It cents. wasn't even. Listen, when we did the first year of Land of the Lost, the second, and first and second, it wasn't even union back then. Saturday oh. morning didn't even have Screen Actors Guild or AFTRA back then. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Wesley, this has been a blast. This has been so much fun. I am so glad you took the time out to come on and play with me. <laughs> it just well, so it's great. because your pasta was good, Esther. Hold on, so one more question. Scott Robin is just on a he's on a he's on a tear. What he created, Slee Stacks. If the Slee Stacks were created by David Gerald, the green ones, but huh. but Walker wrote the first episode called Enoch, which introduced Enoch. 
and someone just said, I'm jealous you met Chris Atkins. I had the biggest crush on him growing up. You know? Oh my God. What a, we just did a show in Connecticut with Chris and you know what you, sometimes you just click with somebody, you meet them, mm -hmm. you know, and because we're, you know, anyway, he is one of the most terrific guys I have met in a long time. He see, and he still looks sexy as hell. I just he, remember. Yeah. His, yeah. I, you go to my, I think I put a, a picture on my Facebook. If, if you guys go to it, but he's yeah. forever burnt in my brain cells, sitting on that rock and blue lagoon going to walk a walk a walk up. I will never forget that. My darling. Thank you so much for popping in today. You have just made my day and I, a lot of people. I, I hope. I hope if you if you didn't catch it live, you're going to watch it later on YouTube. And there's all the information you need on the YouTube on the YouTube uh, 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 channel to get a hold of Wesley to sign up for his TikTok. Which oh, that TikTok! You got two hundred and some odd thousand hits the other day. It was for a seven second video I did with Kathy. I I just joined t TikTok like four days ago. It was right. it's, it's odd. And who told you to go to TikTok? You did. You've oh. been you've been begging me to do this, and and you know what? I followed your advice, and it's great. And because I'm just looking at people here, going, "Great show, love, love, love." Um, but you are a legend, and you are iconic to so many people. And just like you know, I actually got I didn't expect to have tears or feel that type of emotion today. But the the, the blind people, Scott, and the people that you touch, it made it all worth it. Thank you, my love. Ladies and gentlemen, probably one of the most incredible friends a person could have, Mr. Wesley Yor. Thank you, lovey. Bye, darling. Hang on. We'll talk for a second after we sign off. This is Esther Goldberg. Until next time, whoever the hell I can invite to dinner and bring on my show. Ha! Woo!